Yes, her name is Dr. Batshiva. We love her to pieces, and she is so easy to talk to. And she is from Maze Health. Yes. Maze Health. Definitely check that out, mazehealth.com. So, doctor, how are you? Good, but you have to call me Batshiva. My patients call me Batshiva, so you have to call me Batshiva. Batshiva. <laughs> you got it. Yes, ma'am. So we're talking about sex, and first question is, we're in 2020. Why is it still a little awkward um, for some people to talk about sex to your kids, to your partner, and just to speak about it in general? To your parents. You know, it's a, such a great question because it is true. You're right, like we're in 2020, what the hell? And the other thing is that we are just surrounded every day by so much like sex like it's dripping from the you know from the billboards from the tv it, like it's everywhere right and yet nobody has like real conversations about sex like some have a real person to person conversations about things that matter things you're having trouble with things you have a hard time with somehow that is still really hard for us i don't understand what that is exactly i think you know america united states is a particularly repressive society with a repressive history i think if you go to some other cultures not so much a problem um but i i think the way to go at you know to combat that is just to talk about it i feel like that is the most important thing that we have real conversations and people realize that it's not all about like the crazy kinky nutsy stuff it's just the day-to-day -day stuff of sex should you be talking to your friends and people about your sex problems or should you be specifically talking to someone that knows because sometimes you, you don't always talk about it. I know I'm pretty sure men have a, a similar uh, conversations with their boys or whatnot. So what is the right thing to do when okay. there's problems in the bedroom? So I think talking to people and friends is a good thing to do because it makes you feel not alone and it makes you feel supported. But it's not a good place to get advice. That's what I'm going to say. Like, that's where, you know, because people have like a really, people walk around saying things that are like either old wives tales or without the most updated medical information. And that's really a problem. Like, you know, when people talk about, you know, medications and how they affect you, like that's so classic. And, and when people try to give you sort of sex therapy advice and they're not sex therapists, like they could tell you really stupid things. So talk about it, get support, but maybe go to the experts when you need help. So. What happens when you have low sex drive? <laughs> That's like the $60 million question, okay? Um, this coronavirus thing where everybody's stuck in quarantine is really affecting people very differently. So there are some couples who I'm talking to who say like, oh my God, for the first time, we have time in the afternoon or we have time in the morning, which we never did before. And that has really been super helpful to us. And we have time to actually spend time together and do things together. And then I have other couples who are like, I'm freaking ready to kill my partner. <laughs> I do not want to have sex with this person and there's no way in hell. And then there's a whole nother factor of people who are like, our kids are in the next room and I feel super uncomfortable with that. Like, what do I do with that much of a? So those are different answers. Where do you want me to start guys? <laughs> so let's start, I guess, with the, why does it happen? Why does one, lose that sex drive. Boredom and, um, and repetition is not good for eroticism. It just isn't. Like, that's not erotic. Most people, when you ask them about their best time in their sex lives, their best sex lives was early on in relationships, right? You're a little unsure, you're a little nervous, you don't know this person 100%, and that's often the best time. So, and that tends to sort of go downhill a little bit. And, um, and so you have to do other things to like, make that better. You have to kind of address those other things in a way that um, will help boost your sex drive. The other thing is that as we get older, our hormones shift. And so people don't kind of realize that. And so sometimes if I'm seeing a woman and she says to me, the sex, my sex life isn't as good as it used to be, but it's fine. It's okay. Like when he wants to have sex, I can kind of get into it. That's one thing. But if somebody says like, I love this person, but I do not want to have sex with him or anybody for that matter, like I just don't want to say, that's a lot having to do with hormones. You know what I mean? I think we don't give enough, we don't give enough credence to the fact that medications we're on can have that effect or that our hormone shifts as we get older. You know, like when you see two 17 year olds who are in line for a movie theater and they cannot keep their hands off each other, right? Or think of yourselves as 17, right? Okay. You, it wasn't because you were having these deep, fabulous conversations or because the guy had brought you flowers yesterday, right? It's because your hormones were raging, right? 
So we acknowledge that so much when it comes to teenagers, but we sometimes have a problem realizing that that's true about us grownups, that we hormone shifts are huge. Does that make sense? It yeah. makes total sense. So what can someone expect when they go to mazehealth.com? Oh, Maze Health. The facilities of Maze Health. So um, what we specialize in and what I think we do unbelievably well is that we look at the whole person, always. Like, we try to get to know you, not just your vagina, not just your penis, not just your vulva, right? And not just your relationship and not just your communication. We're trying to look at the whole picture. And so you'll spend usually, the women, you start with the therapist and move on to the medical person. With the men, you start with the medical person and move on to the therapist. Um, but you spend always a chunk of time talking to somebody who gets to know you as a person, finds out what your habits are, what your medications are, what your relationship looks like, what your fears are, what your goals are, right? Like, you know, you might have been somebody who had sex every single day. And so your idea, that, that was worked in your life when you were younger. And so now if you can get back to a sex life where you have sex two or three times a week, you'll be thrilled. And you might be somebody who had sex at the best times two or three times a week. And now if you have sex once a week, that would be great. So everybody's a little bit different or, or to be fair, you might be somebody who's just by yourself and learning how to have sex by yourself and have it be something that makes you feel good and, and gives you pleasure. Like that's important too. I can't forget that those people are out there also. That's right. Now on average, cause there's so many things that people say out there, so many myths. How many times should a couple with kids or without kids have sex? I love that question. Okay. I hate that question. Okay. <laughs> so I used to get asked this question all the time. And um, I used to give the classic therapist answer, which is there's no right or wrong. Whatever works for you is just fine. As long as you and your, your partner are happy with it. That is the answer I'm supposed to give you. And then people would say, okay, okay, we get that much of it. Now tell us the truth, <laughs> right? Okay. So I would say, from my experience, that couples who have sex once, twice a week are doing great. And if you're somebody who has, like, likes to have a little bit less sex and your partner's good with that, that's fine. Usually, and again, there's exceptions, usually a couple who has sex less than, let's say, once every two weeks, that's where I start seeing cracks happening in the relationship. But I will tell you that about three years ago, a study came out. A study came out. I was like, yeah, I finally have some data. Anyway, the study showed that people's happiness level goes up with their sex life until the point where they're having sex once a week. And after that, it, it tapers off. So some people will still want to have sex five times a week, and some people will want to have sex once a week. Um, but on average, on average, right, there's a bell curve. Some people more, some people less. Once a week, if you're having good sex in the long term once a week and you're both feeling good about it, you're good to go. So there have been people that have um, tried therapy or have gotten help when it came to those sex drive and it maybe hasn't worked out for them. What can you, what can they expect at May's Health? Because sometimes they're a little turned off, like maybe I'm skeptical this. about going back to something and, and seeing if it actually works. That is, that is a great question because we get that all the time from patients. So the problem is that when you go see a sex therapist, or a therapist, um, either you can have a great therapist or not such a good therapist, let's start with that. But even a really good therapist is only seeing the sort of the relationship dynamic piece of it, right? And that your feelings piece of it. Right. If you go to a doctor because you have pain or most women don't even think of going to a doctor because they have low desire, you know what I mean? Like that's just, but if you do, the doctor doesn't start asking questions about what your relationship is like. So everybody's only looking at half the puzzle piece. And so what I think Maze does amazingly, not to, you know, Maze amazingly, I did not do that on purpose, um, is really integrate those two parts, right? Like the idea that you are a full person and that what happens in your head is affecting your body and what's happening in your body is affecting your brain. And that there may be multiple ways to sort of get in to fix the problem and let's work with you to see what works. So like, if hormones make sense, that's great. If, you know, couple therapy makes sense, maybe we'll say that too. If there's pain issues, you know, we'll address that. Um, if you're having erection, you know, if the woman's feeling bad because, you know, the guy doesn't want to have sex because his erections aren't strong and, 
And then we have a conversation and the woman's like, well, I don't mind having non-intercourse sex. We can have sex with, you know, you have 10 fingers, and 10 toes and a lot of other body parts. And we can do that while you're fixing the problem. Then that, we'll do that. Like we're all about like looking at the whole picture, looking at all the possible solutions and then helping you fix it. What point should they go seeking help? Because sometimes we are tired. People have busy lives. They have kids. They have work. A lot of things can intervene. But when do you say, wait Maybe. a minute, there's this, a problem. There's yeah. a problem. Let me go to May's health and see if they can help me. At what point do you think a woman or a man should, you know, seek help? So I usually say three to six months. That's like a time slot. Like, you know, you've had a baby, you're feeling better. You think you should be back in, not working so well. Three, give it a few months. I'd give it a few months. And then if you feel like um, still, I can't seem to make it happen. You're putting some effort in. Here, I, here's where I feel like we end up blaming ourselves. Like, especially women, we're really good at blaming ourselves. I didn't try enough. When I, I didn't try hard enough. I didn't fantasize enough. I didn't, I didn't, you know, buy sexy lingerie. I hate my body. Like, it, and then doctors say, then we'll just do it. I, it makes me so enraged. Like, if they could just do it, they would just do it. That's exactly, fine. Yeah. You know, sex should not be, sex is not, I don't think sex should be seen as this huge romantic thing that just happens spontaneously. On the other hand, it should not be so much work that you're dragging yourself to do it. That is not a good state. So if you feel like that has happened, you know, that's how you feel for quite a while, get help and get help before it creates other problems in the relationship. Because when a woman has low desire and a man starts feeling like she doesn't love me, she doesn't like me, she doesn't want to have sex with me. When a woman starts to feel like a guy, you know, is or the reverse. If a guy is a low sex drive and the woman feels like, oh my God, is he having an affair? You know, is it me? Is it the extra five pounds I gained? Trust me, that's not usually the problem. Um, you know, then it creates all these other problems. People start having affairs or they start having, you know, relationships over the internet. Like it creates, people start feeling very alienated. And then those problems are way harder to solve than the erection problems or the desire problems. So the first thing I always say is give it a few months, but if it feels like it's just not getting better, get help. Um, and the second thing is that I feel like trust yourself a little bit. People know when there's something is not right. Get yeah, that gut feeling. Now, do you talk to your partner first about it and then go to a specialist or should you go seek help and then it's like, what is the right way to do it? So I'm, I'm all about talking to your partner first. I'm all about saying to your partner, um, listen, sweetie, I, I feel really bad. I, you might be able to tell that I haven't really been into our sex life so much recently and it really isn't you. Like, I love you. I want to have sex with you. I still think you're beautiful. I still think you're hot. Um, but something's not working here and I don't know what it is. So I'd like to make us better. And so I'm going to go see somebody. I, I never am a fan of people kind of sneaking behind somebody's back. And every once in a while we have a woman come in and she didn't tell her partner and she's afraid he's going to then pressure her to have sex or whatever, or he's going to be insulted. Or, so then we'll work with her on how to talk about it. Because for some people, these are hard conversations to have. Right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Bacheva. We have learned so much in yes. this little Zoom interview that we've done with you. Uh, we're looking right. forward to having a lot more of these. There's so many chat. other questions. I am here. I am stuck in my house. I am happy to talk anytime you want. Now, for everyone that wants to know more about uh, Maze Health, you can check them out at mazehealth.com or follow them on Instagram, uh, Maze Women's Health at Maze Men's Health, and you can follow uh, Dr. Bat Shiva on Instagram. And I want to add one other thing, okay. which is that we have these free 10-minute consultations. So if you're even thinking that you want to come in, but you don't want to spend the time and the money doing something where you feel like may not be helpful, then call up and make a free 10-minute consultation. You'll talk to either a therapist or one of the um, nurse practitioner or clinicians, and they'll talk to you about like what's the problem and do, is this something we can help with because we don't want you coming in either if, if we're not going to be able to help nobody nobody has time to wait right now right well thank you so much we look forward to our next chat and uh stay safe stay safe you too and stay sane okay stay safe, <laughs> stay safe. bye bye, bye.